for a few times uh, without any problem and as usual Murphy's law if something can go wrong it will so basically I apologize for the streaming in portrait and I have no choice because I've tested it on landscape without any problem but anyway I have uh, scheduled it for now, 10 o'clock, so I have to continue regardless of whatever the situation of the streaming. All right, so basically uh, we are talking today about aquaponic builds, but we are more touching towards the uh, pumps, water feed, siphon control, water, water control, water flow. So if anybody have any question with regards to uh, these items, uh, I'll be glad to assist. And we are looking at uh, aquaponics uh, in the sense that for uh, enthusiasts. So how is my audio? Uh, is it clear? Because I, I would not be able to hear my audio. Uh, please uh, give me some feedback so, so that uh, I have no problem with my audio. Okay. There will be slight delay eh, in uh, dagging, basically. Audio loud and clear. Thank you, Xia, uh, Chiu, Ang. Uh, thank you very much for reporting because I, I will feel very bad if my audio is bad. Uh, the picture orientation, I've tested it a few times. It was in landscape yesterday. However, as usual, as I said, Murphy's Law. It decided to become portrait this morning exactly when I was transmitting today. So I have no choice but to rotate it on the landscape. But anyway, uh, portrait. Anyway, doesn't matter. What's important is that you can uh, have, we have visual and we have a good audio. And I can see uh, your comments. Then it's also that I can answer. So as usual, what we are going to discuss today or uh, what I'm going to talk about or any question that you want to ask is basically on aquaponic builds in terms of the uh, water control. So if you have any question or anything that you are experiencing problem, I will be glad to assist. So basically, in terms of aquaponics, what we need, as usual, the fish tank, the grow bait, that is a simple thing. And one step further, what we require will be the, the pumps, the tubings to get water flowing into the system and a means of control the water. That's basically, that's, that's actually all there is in terms of an aquaponic build. Most important, you must get the pump right without any adjusting to the pump and it will, it will work. That's the most important thing because you do not want to constantly have to tweak a pumps, adjusting valve, adjusting taps. It's no good. What uh, I will recommend is uh, in terms of uh, aquaponic build, depend on the number of siphon and what kind of siphon you are using, and then the water inflow will be uh, standard. It's a very simple formula that I use to determine what is the pump size for uh, my aquaponic setup. Regardless whether you're using a uh, traditional grow bed, which is the bigger tub, or using um, the gutter. The, the, the item, that the, the thing that determine the pump size is basically the number of siphon. So in my uh, aquaponic setup, I have four gutters and it's using the mini siphon. Let me get you the mini siphon. So I'm using this mini siphon, which is a 15 millimeter siphon uh, for each of this grow bed. So the total number of grow bed that I have is four. And each of these is a very simple rule of thumb will require 500 liter of water per hour. So if you have four grow bed, you just multiply it by four. So the minimum pump capacity or the rating of the pump is a minimum of 2,000 liter per hour for a four grow bed setup. 
it's a very simple. You can have a bigger pump. I also would recommend a bigger pump because as you know, pump will deteriorate with time. So you do not want the pump have just the enough uh, flow and if it start to deteriorate, then you will have a problem in uh, water flow into your system. So if you require, after the calculation of the siphon, you require 2,000 liter per hour, I would recommend you step it up to 3,000 liter per hour pump. And because these are a few things about pumps, uh, there are smaller pumps and the bigger pumps. I would always like to recommend a pump of around 3,000 liter per hour due to the construction of the pump. Uh, one very important aspect of pump is the the impeller inside the pump. That is the most important aspect of a pump. That will determine how long the pump will last. Uh, I have an uh, example of the pump. Let me get the example of the pump and I will show you the features of the pump which is very important, you must take note. If you don't see these features, do not ever buy this pump. This is, a, I'm not promoting this particular pump, basically, but I've been using this pump for a very long time. This is the Astro 3000. You have Astro 2000, you have Astro 3000. I'm not affiliated with anything with them. I do not get anything from them. It's just that I've been using this pump. You can use other pumps, but the features of the pump that you need to know is the one inside the pump. I have put it in my block, block and open up the pump and have a look inside. You can, you can actually sometimes view it from top, you can see it, it's the shaft of the pump basically. The, the most important part is the pump shaft. This part of the pump, this shaft, some of this shaft are made of uh, steel. This particular shaft is made of ceramic. So if you want to practice aquaponics, those that are familiar with aquarium, those that have practiced aquarium uh, will know a ceramic shaft pump will last a very long time. So that's rule number one with regards to pump. Get a pump with a ceramic shaft. Don't ever buy a pump with a steel shaft because it will just fail after two, three months. When it comes to ceramic shaft, it should last you ages, years. As long as there's no abuse, it will be running uh, without any problem. Only that you have to uh, do regular maintenance, cleaning of the pump. That is normal. This is the basically the Astro 3000 pump, which I highly recommend because of the ceramic shaft. If you happen to find other brand of uh, other made of pumps, and they are also using a ceramic shaft, yes, you can use it because they will just be as good as the one that I recommend. Let me get you another pump, which is the Astro 2000. Two thousand, the smaller brothers or sibling of the Astro three thousand is a very old pump. It's already breaking into. So basically, let's I open up the pump, and the impeller is already damaged, but the shaft is still there. This is a Astro two thousand. It will still have ceramic shaft. However, please be careful. A 2,000 liter per hour rated pump, even that is made by the same company, Astro, to Astro uh, it could have a steel shaft. So when you buy a pump which is uh, rated about 2,000 liter per hour, make sure you check.
because you don't assume it is a ceramic shaft because it can have steel shaft for a 2,000 liter power pump. That you have to be careful because sometimes people will order online. You are familiar with this pump, you order online and when it arrives, it has a steel shaft inside. So be careful with the 2,000 liter per hour pump, just be careful on that. But for a 3,000 liter per hour pump, usually most of the time it is a ceramic shaft because as the pump get bigger, they realize that steel just doesn't make it. It, it doesn't last long. Uh, the price of the pump depends on where you shop. I seen it on Shopee for the Astro 3000 for as low as 45 ringgit or maybe lower. This I bought it in the aquarium shop. It cost me from 65 to 70 ringgit. You can get it in Shopee uh, for 45 or 38. Depend. Uh, you have a look. However, I do not. I'm not sure what is the shaft of the pump on Shopee, but the price is significantly less. This is uh, very good. And if you are using a 3,000 liter per hour pump, the the electricity bill is roughly around 10 ringgit a month for the entire aquaponic setup, and it doesn't uh, doesn't make any difference whether you are uh, having a short grow bed or a long grow bed it's the same when it comes to the power requirement the one i has uh, the the setup i have at the back is a, a five feet grow bed multiplied by four and the power requirement is roughly around 10 ringgit a month for if I extend the grow bit to longer than that, to double the length to 10 feet, it still consumes the same amount of power because the siphon is still 4 unit, doesn't change. Uh, please take note that the power requirement for the gutter grow bit or for traditional grow bit will solely depend on how many siphon you are using. The length, the size of the grow bed doesn't make any difference. That's the beauty part. So if you have a good, uh, a, a large space, have a grow bed which is about 10 feet long. I don't really recommend if it's longer than 10 feet for only one reason. It's quite difficult for you to balance it out. But if you can manage to balance the the gutter or the grow bed to be level without any problem, then you can have a longer gutter. So imagine if you have a full length gutter that is almost 20 feet and you have four of those gutters. Each of the cluster of setup will only require 10 watt of electricity. That's a very economical uh, thing to operate. And for 20 feet gutters, you can have a lot of plants to grow. So that is a good viable option if uh, somebody want to do uh, intensive farming with regards to with aquaponics. So that is a one option that you can use. You can have a long gutter, make sure it is very straight. And you use only one pump for each of this cluster of gutter. Uh, I don't recommend you use one huge pump. One big huge pump is good, it's convenient. But in case there is a failure of the pump, the whole entire system will be uh, jeopardized with this one single pump. Unless you have a, a good backup system which can kick in or easily replace uh, without any problem, then it's another story. However, for home enthusiasts, I will recommend stick to a medium sized pump like 2000 liter, 3000 liter, 4500 liter or 5000. And if you require the flow capacity is not enough by this pump because you may have more than four gutters, you better to buy another pump because they are cheap, not expensive 
but you have redundancy in the sense that if one of the pump fail you will have at least another half of your system will be running uh, without any problem and the fish will have oxygenated water without issues so these are the things that we have to look at when we design an aquaponic system uh, the set i have at the back i only have one pump and so far i do not have any problem with pump failure as i mentioned from my last um, uh, live stream last week uh, somebody was asking if they want to go on a travel for quite some time let's say about two weeks or three weeks is there any problem as i mentioned take care of the pump make sure they are in good condition clean it if you have doubt about the health of the pump replace it with a new pump before you go for a travel but don't re replace it immediately before you go for a travel at least three four days before you go for a travel replace it because you want to monitor a new item for um, failure just in case it is something that have a manufacturing defect so you can fail after one or two days so these are the things that you have to uh, keep in mind because you are dealing with aquaponics, live items. Again, when it comes to leaving the system, it's also best to have aeration pump. Aeration pump is valuable. You do not need it if your water flow is good. However, there will be times where you may have a problem with your water pump. So if you have a problem with your water pump, the fish in the aquaponic system require oxygenated water. So if water flow is interrupted, the oxygenated water will be depleted. The water will be depleted of oxygen due to the fish in the uh, system. So in that situation, it is good to have a aeration pump. You do not need to run the aeration pump all the time. Uh, I, I do not have an aeration pump. So far, I've been lucky because the where I stay, the electrical failure is very rare to happen. And when it happens, it, the most it will last for one hour or two hours. So I can get away with it. But if your situation, if your place that you are operating aquaponic, the electricity is not reliable. So you have to think about a backup system. Either you are using batteries as a backup or you're using uh, whatever solar power as a backup most important backup is the aeration pump let's say you do not want to have a backup of uh, uh, water pump it's okay have a backup or have a aeration pump ready to kick in when there is a power failure pump failure in order to keep the fish alive uh, as far as the plant is concerned, if a uh, pump failure for a day, there is no problem because there are moisture in the gutters and there are water trapped in the gutters. So if the gutters ha happen to have to be depleted of water, you just scoop it and replenish it manually. You have a few inches of water standing. It's good enough uh, to keep the plant alive. However, the fish will require aeration so for an aquaponic system it is important to have aeration pump as a backup so that is very important so have anybody have any question uh, we are looking at uh, simple aquaponic bill and this simple aquaponic bill is uh, basically we will, we will cover uh, water feed water control and there are people that is not familiar of uh, of this uh, gutter uh, system and the, uh, the type of siphon that is used. From your experience, how long the Astro 3000 pump will last before kaput? Okay, uh, from my experience, the Astro 3000, if I maintain it properly without uh, having debris like rocks or stones going into the system uh, it will last a very long time i can safely say it's about three years uh, without any problem 
I have a Astro Pump which is very old. This one is very old, but it's still working. It's just that it's so old, I'm a bit afraid uh, to leave it inside the system because I, I went for a vacation. As I mentioned, if you have doubt with the help of your pump, because this is quite an old pump, it's been running for, for quite some time. So when I want to go for a vacation, I put a new pump in. This one I will remove and put it as a spare pump. It's still working fine without any problem. It's just very dirty. So if I need it, I can just put it back into the system because my system, I have, I made it such that it's very easy to replace this pump. So there is no, no much of a problem in replacing this pump. This Astro pump, the water feed, let me show the water feed. Let's talk about water feed into an aquaponic system. Do you put some filter before pump intake? Uh, no. Uh, before the pump intake, basically, I just rely on this pump strainer. And there is no requirement because in the fish tank, there are hardly any things that could clog the pump easily. Unless you feed the fish with uh, uh, cuttings from the, uh, the uh, grow bed, then they, that one can cause blockage. But usually, blockage takes time. It doesn't happen uh, immediately in one go. It takes time. You will start to see the pump water flow deteriorating. So then, you will suspect there is a, a blockage. Then you just clean it. So, let's say this is the pump. I just put it back in. Okay, this is the pump. The, for feeding of an aquaponic system, uh, I would recommend you use uh, a 15 millimeter uh, PVC pipe for this particular fittings and just put it like that. So it's a very simple uh, fit. You can have this 15 millimeter all the way to the grow bed. But from my experience, I will need to, I will step it up from 15 millimeter to 20 millimeter. Just because a 20 millimeter pipe is bigger, it tend to last longer or it's very difficult to have a significant algae build up internally to cause problem to the water feed. So from here, 15, I will step it up to 20 and it goes to the grow bed. If your pump is a bit strong, if your pump is very strong, it is best to put a T at this point. The top part will go to the grow bed, but the horizontal part, put it to a, a stopcock. The valve, if you can see the one here at the back, I have a, a stock cock uh, put in. That one is always in the shut position. But if you have excessive water, you can open up the stock cock to just deep, uh, reduce the water flow into the grow bed. So do not uh, restrict water flow. Don't ever restrict water flow from a pump. Divert the flow into the tank so that it does not have a full flow into the grow bed if required, if you use a bigger pump. If you restrict a, uh, the pump by putting, let's say, a, a stopcock here and you adjust the stopcock, that is not a good option because what will happen, the pump will be operating under the stress, additional stress due to the restriction. And that will cause uh, food uh, pump uh, operational decay or deterioration of the pump uh, faster and you are basically wasting more electricity. So by putting a T-joint before it goes into the grow bed and putting a stopcock, at least you can give a recirculation water into the fish tank and that will basically create an aeration also. So you are, you are not putting things to waste. So after this particular 
uh, outlet uh, fittings to the pump i can see uh, let's see get whether okay Okay, something like this. This is the intake just now, uh, the outlet from the pump. Put a T. Like that. This goes to the stock cock, the one you see at the back here. Just to do a recirculation of water. And this goes to the grow bed. The grow bed, uh, in terms of water feed, I do not have any other adjustment to the water feed apart from the stock cock that I put here for recirculation if required. The, because you can see on some uh, people set up, they have multiple adjustment stock cock at the inlet of the grow bed. So that is basically a, 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 a very inefficient way of uh, putting things in. You are restricting water into the grow bed. So what will happen is, if your pump start to deteriorate, or there is some problem in the system, you have to constantly adjust those uh, stock cock individually into the grow bed. Don't ever do that way, because you will have a lot of problem. So how I make the water inlet into the grow bed, uh, regardless of any grow bed, you will need to do a, a division I will do it this way. Okay, you can see it. Okay. This is the water inlet coming from the pump. Branch it into two. Because if you branch it into two, the, the division is equal. Make sure the length of the left and right are the same. Then travel it further up into the grow bed and subdivide it into further two. So basically, you are dividing two, it will be equally divided. Then you further divide it into two. So total you have four feet. Sorry about this, because I need to sit a bit further. So you have this kind of feet, which is four. So when you have uh, this kind of uh, four feeding, the, you do not need any other device to control the water. If you are using a 2,000 liter per hour pump. You don't even need a stock cock. You just straight away from the pump, go into this arrangement, and you go into the grow bed without any problem. If you are using 3,000 liter per hour pump, which I highly recommend, which is with excess capacity, just before this, make sure you have a T to recirculate the water back into the fish tank. So then, this will work without any problem. No other adjustment required. The system will work straight without you have to constantly mending with the uh, stop cock. So I'm sure you have seen a few uh, installation on the internet that will have multiple stop cock. That is basically ridiculous. You just do a division which is equal. This kind of division is you double it, double it. It will divide the water nicely. However, let's say you want to divide by three. Don't do it. If you start to have a, a branch of three, it's very difficult to have a, a, simple, a, a simple division of flow. Because you will not have a, a proper length. The length of your tubes here and here will not be equal if you have, let's say, another branch here. You want to fit into six grow bed. Let's say you have a very strong pump, you want to fit into six grow bed. So you branch here, put a T joint here, you branch it out and put another uh, T up here to branch it. So you can say you have six grow bed. That situation, you require to put one stock cock at the, at the extra branch. So you have to adjust the water because if you divide the water not by two, it will be, they will be prone for unbalance. You, the, the rule of thumb is you must always divide the water feed by two. 
So you can have a smaller pump and you just have two grow bed. You just divide it by two, no problem. You have three grow bed, then you will have problem to divide the water flow into three. You will need to constantly later on to adjust. So I will never recommend you to have uh, three grow bed. I always recommend to have two, four. Then if you want to expand further, you can go eight. But when it comes to eight grow bed, it's best to have a second pump. So one pump, I will recommend to go into four grow bed. You can feed uh, multiple grow bed with uh, one pump. There's no problem. I have a high capacity pump. But you need to do a lot of tweaking with the water feed. And basically, that is no good. You want to have a system where you build and you just let it run without any problem. And you just uh, view it, like me, I just view it from the window of my kitchen and just look at one of the water flow. That's all. If I can see one water flow, I know that the water is uh, flowing well without any problem. I do not need to look at the other two or three water, water outlet because I know the division I made will make sure the water is balanced. So that is important to make your, your monitoring easier. So that's the whole idea. You do not want to have an aquaponic system that you are constantly have to monitor the system so that it will run properly. So it's not easy, it's, it's bad. You want an aquaponic system which is invisible, meaning the system is invisible. What is visible is your pump. Uh, sorry, what is visible is your plant. The plant is visible. That is what you want. You want to plant. You do not want to constantly mending with the aquaponic system. I have done that for a long time, so don't do it. So basically, uh, we have uh, make sure the aquaponic system work without any problem for that a lot of people can practice without <laughs> having a headache. Worries about the system will, will, will operate or not. Okay, there's a question. Planning to start Aquaponic 2 during this PKP uh, from Nat Afro. Yes, uh, why not? Uh, however, they are my friend, well, one of my friends in Kota Kinabalu, uh, Papar in Kota Kinabalu, he's starting Aquaponics. He's uh, inside Aquaponic Malaya, uh, no, Aquaponic Malaysia. I'm sure he has posted his aquaponic set uh, that he's building. He's waiting for space, uh, waiting for parts, waiting for tanks. And uh, he constantly messaged me for uh, guidance. So, so I let him know, give him photograph, pictures, so that he can build his system without any problem. So unfortunately, a lot of other people will require assistance. But I, I can't actually share my phone number because I'm working the phone is belong to a company to my company so it's not really fair for me to share the company phone to give to people uh, wait until i retire <laughs> that's another story so basically uh, i assist him and he's building it during the pkp uh, the only thing is that the hardware shop whether it's open or not uh, when you want it uh, it's a very simple thing the, the parts are very simple very easy to get I have listed it in, in various of my aquaponic blogs, videos, what are the items needed. Uh, it's a very simple setup. Uh, I really recommend uh, you to grow, uh, to start up uh, uh, during this PKP because you, you have at least something to, to uh, occupy yourself rather than trying to worry about uh, the situation we are in. This is something that takes you away from the worries of PKP. Uh, because fish in an aquarium, is, it has therapeutic value. It has therapeutic value even to the autism people. They have therapeutic value for fish in aquarium. So if you have an aquaponic system that have fish, that have uh, plants, that is actually a therapeutic value to individual. You, you, even though if you are working, you go to work, and you come back, come back from work, you are stressed up. So you go to your backyard, you go to your front lawn or wherever you have your aquaponic system, you start to just take care of the aquaponic system, feed the fish, look at the fish, take care of the plant. 
did have a good therapeutic value to reduce your stress. So this is one aspect of uh, a hobby uh, will actually help you. So I'm not talking anything special about aquaponics that will do this, but any hobby. So anything that will keep you occupied, keep your mental away from the stress that you are facing is beneficial, regardless of what you do. Okay, what's the question? Slotted angle iron, very hard to find at the hardware shop. Which shop did you bought? Uh, that slotted angle iron, uh, depend on where do you stay, uh, Muhammad Ash Fan. Where do you stay? I'm not sure where you stay. If you can just let me know where do you stay, I can at least tell you. But uh, I'm in Shah Alam along Sungai Buloh. I'm actually specifically in Bukit Jelutong, uh, uh, Bukit Subang area. So the hardware shop is a lot in, around my area and I have no issue on that. Uh, there are shops in Sungai Buloh that is selling. There are shops in Kampung Subang, uh, Pekan Baru Subang, they are selling. Uh, this hardware shop knows me because I went to the spaces so many times. So I'm not sure where you are staying, but uh, you can try around, shop around. That, that angle iron, they have two types. This, the one at the back is the, the, the bigger one, they have the smaller one. So both can be used uh, without any problem. Uh, and the, the, the cutting of the angle iron, you have to be very careful because you need to cut it at a 3 inches interval. Don't ever cut it without a multiple, multiple of 3 inches because it comes about 10 feet, 120 inches. You can cut it into two, 60 inches each. So anything is divisible by three is good. If it's not divisible by three, don't ever cut that length. One feet, 12 inches is divisible by three. Don't ever cut it seven inches. You would never able to use it. So the, the only thing about this angle iron, this the type that I have here, the one at the back, make sure you cut the piece to the length of three inches. And it have a marker here, if you can see, it's best to cut it at in between the, the, the biggest slot. That's the best area to cut. Each of these are three inches. It's best to cut it at this point. Don't ever cut it at here in between. Don't ever cut it here at the wider slot. Let me get you the, the angle iron, show you closely. As I mentioned, uh, apologize for my uh, portrait um, streaming. I've tested it uh, two days ago on landscape streaming for three hours without problem. This is an iPhone 8 Plus I'm using. Previously, last week I was using the iPad, but iPad streaming, iPad a bit too big for me to bring it around to show is quite difficult. So this morning, immediately when I stream, uh, the iPhone decide to be on the portrait mode. I try everything I could, but it's a bit too late. Uh, basically, it cut me off guard. So that's what happened. You will have this portrait mode. Okay, back to the angle iron. This is the angle iron. So basically, you have two sides. One side is like this, another side is like this. So this is the, the, the bigger one. The smaller one, both sides will be like this. Okay, how do you cut the angle iron? Basically, you have to cut it here. Don't ever cut it somewhere here. You have to cut it between here and here. If you do not cut it at this point and this point, you will never able to assemble it because the holes will be required to have a good alignment. And most of the shop that sell this can cut it for you. So you want to make a rack, let's say a 3 feet rack, cut it 36 inches. Each of these are 3 inches, it's just 36 is basically you require the, uh, 3 times uh, what? Uh, around 3, 10, 12, around 12. So you just cut, count 12 of these and it will be 36 inches, you cut it. Some shop will have a cutter, they can cut it, they, they use a, two types of cutter. One is the circular cutter with the rotary wheel. I have those things that I use. 
sometimes the uh, better shop they have a, a stamper kind of cutter where they just put it in and they cut. That is a much better cutter, but quite difficult to find uh, with shop. So about this angle iron, one piece of this angle iron, as I mentioned from my last three year, uh, last week trimming, is around 15 ringgit. They are very cheap. So you just calculate how much you need, uh, plan properly. How do you want to cut the 10 feet long uh, angle iron to make your uh, to make your racking? Because you may need to cut three feet. So for a 10 feet long, you can have three of three pieces of three feet. Then you will remain with one feet like this. The, the 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 height is about one feet so when i cut three pieces of that uh, three feet i will have a balance of one feet so the one feet i use it for the height of the uh, racking so you have to really calculate it properly so you do not want any wastage from the angle iron so that that's the whole idea these are a lot of spares from my previous racking that i done and they are nicely cut for the uh, the full uh, full height basically is coming from the bottom any question what about the second hand scaffolding steel uh, second hand scaffolding steel i'm not really familiar with uh, that second hand scaffolding steel but i'm sure it is very big uh, to make a racking from that material is no issue because this is how uh, depend how best you want to assemble a rack there is no hard and fast rule you have to make it this way or that way as long as you have anything that you can bring the gutter roughly around three feet high three feet high about a table table length table height so that you can have easily do your planting it's good enough if you have higher then it could be very awkward for you to start to do planting so you have to take into consideration only on the height how big then depend if we, if you can support the gutter without any uh, sagging of the gutter without the uh, problem in its leveling there's no issue because as i mentioned earlier the reason i use a gutter which is about five feet length because i do not want the gutter to have a difficulties uh, the problem is is in level leveling of the gutters so i do not want uh, if the gutter is too long and you don't support it properly it can have sagging at certain point and you will have water flowing problem so for my setup each of the gutter will have a span of two and a half feet or two feet or two and a half feet uh, so that it will be supported at every around two feet this is one two three four five six seven eight 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 is eight multiplied by three is 24 that means for every two feet i have a, a, a span across to take the gutter so that's how it is and the grow bit is longer than the gutter uh, racking length because I let the gutter uh, overhang the end of the the end of the uh, racking so then uh, without any problem so both side of the grow bit is overhanging the gutter like the one that you have at the back here so it just overhang a bit so we can get away with with a, a lot more overhang no issues no problem because the span is two feet basically if if you have a let's say a, a six inch of overhang it's still okay so you do not need to make a, a racking which is the same length as the uh, grow bit i would recommend you make a racking which is shorter than the grow bit uh, as much as one feet shorter so you can have an overhang of half a half a feet on each end of the racking. Uh, the only thing you have to take note is where is your siphon outlet. The one I have here, my siphon outlet. Let me just show you the siphon outlet, and uh, I just can't have to carry this camera. Let's have a go. 
So let's switch it to the front camera. Alright. So you can see from here. Alright. I have a overhang. So this there's a lot of overhang here. So no problem. So the this basically this uh, racking can be shorter by half and uh, half a feet here and half a feet the other side. So that you have to take into consideration because now you will save in term of um, the amount of uh, angle iron that you can use. So I have my uh, aquaponic. Why we need bell siphon? Could we just flow water in one continuous cycle? Uh, when you have uh, one continuous cycle, the system is ba basically the system will be uh, a deep, either a deep water culture or uh, NFT. Why do you need a siphon? This is a, a, a good basic question. You see, a siphon control water in the flood and drain cycle. You have a look at this one. Now it's draining. You can see it's draining water. So it's draining water now. So it's draining water from this particular gutter to a very low level. Once the water level has dropped down significantly low, the draining will stop. Once the draining will stop, the water will start to fill back into this gutter to flood it. This is what we call the flood and drain cycle. So it will going to be flooding, it's going to be draining, it's going to be flooding and draining continuously 24 over 7. Why we need to do that in an aquaponic system is in order for nitrification process to occur. Inside this, these are leka balls or clay tablets or rocks or stones depend on whatever media you're using. Inside here, you plant the plants apart from holding the roots. It also a place for bacteria to grow. If this is constantly flooded with water, what will happen is you have issues with plants that you grow. Certain plants do not cannot have uh, roots that is submerged in water, but you need to have a flood and drain in order to keep this uh, leka or clay pebbles moisture. So in order for the bacteria to flourish, to do the nitrification cycle. So the bacteria require moisture and oxygen. So when you flood the grow, grow bed, it gives moisture. When you drain the grow bed, it will give oxygen, air or oxygen. So this flood and drain cycle in aquaponics is the most efficient way to give the nitrification bacteria uh, air and moisture. So they can flourish and react on the ammonia nitrite to convert it to nitrate. This is how, this is why I really recommend a flood and drain system because the effect of the flood and drain will maximize the nitrification process of the bacteria. If you have water just standing, flowing, the, the cycle of giving moisture and air is not as good. And you will have a root standing on water. So this is a problem. Or if you have just a continuous flow, like the nutrient flame transfer, you see those people are practicing on tubes. Those are the things that will just have a water flow. That also is not an efficient system to start an aquaponics. Those are hydroponics where you have readily available um, chemical fertilizer. So then you can have that system. But in aquaponics, you are creating or making uh, fertilizer from the fish uh, water, the ammonia and fish water, and this requires nitrification bacteria. And to have a maximum efficiency in the system, 
you need a flood and drain system which uh, maximize the uh, bacteria growth and maximize the nitrification process. I hope I answered that question. But uh, all right, let me just uh, put the camera back to the position which is supposed to go. Okay. Okay, there's a question. Uh, your white vase seem nicely fit to go to where you bought it. Okay. Uh, okay, there's a few questions. Just uh, why we need siphon? Okay, I already answered that for aquaponic system. Bila sepatutnya kita tambah anti chlorine in the system. Okay, aquaponic system you don't require anti chlorine. Eh? I uh, don't require anti chlorine. Uh, I never ever use anti chlorine in the aquaponic system. But let's say you start new, like you want to do aquarium, kan? Aquarium basically the aquarium problem is you need anti chlorine because you want to put fish immediately. Okay, uh, chlorine in the water will last basically the most will last around 24 hours. The most it will last. That if you just put it stagnant. Depend ah if you use chlorine ah sometimes the they they can use some other chemical not chlorine in dalam air ah but this are talking about chlorine chlorine free standing within what one or two days should be disappear but if you circulate the water it will disappear more so in aquaponic system you just i just put let's say you have a new system just put the water in let it run normally within 24 hours is safe to put fish and in an aquaponic system, not like an aquarium where you require to put fish immediately. So let it let it run. Let it run. 24 hours, directly, no problem. So even if you are really hard pressed for time, within one or two hours, if your system running fine, put aeration in it, the chlorine is, will be gone. No no problem. So unless the, the, the water using uh, chloramine, Chloramine then will last even longer, but you have to do. Uh, then some places uh, like swimming pool, you use bromine. Uh, that even more worse. Uh, don't ever use water with bromine. That is poison to the fish. Anyway, so chlorine within 24 hours, within few hours, is going to be safe for the fish as long as you circulate water. So I never ever use the chlorine. Even if I add water into the system, I add about 20%, 30% straight from the taps, I never use anti chlorine. I just pour it in straight to the front taps, let the water uh, replace itself, it's no problem. But not too much. Huh? So, you replace 100%, then you will have problem. Okay, for aquaponics, uh, your white vase seems fit nicely to gutter. Yeah, that uh, the white vase, let me have a get the white vase. Okay, this uh, the vase. As you can, this a vase, not white lah. You have a terracotta color. So I bought it in the nursery, Selangor Green Lane at Sungai Buloh, lot 54. Uh, it's very cheap. I think about 80 cent each. The brand is uh, brand is Gaffrey. You see the brand brand name Gaffrey. That's the brand name of the the pots. So this uh, quite some time to have uh, search for this pot basically. So I've been all over the place. I've been using so many different pots. Uh, in the end, I settled for this pots because it fit nicely into the uh, gutter grow bed without any problem. I do not need to put any more um, uh, electrical tubes to support. Uh, initially, when I started aquaponics on this gutter grow bed, I have to put tubes to support the, the the pots because the pot that I use is big enough but it's not narrow enough at the bottom to sit nicely. But this this work wonders. This one I highly recommend. So it's a good one to 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 buy. So basically if you have you if you have uh, if you have five feet uh, gutter you can put about seven of these pots. Uh, what are the question? So you know where to buy it, uh, uh, Sungai Buloh. But the brand I show just now, Gaffrey, 
you probably can find it uh, somewhere else uh, because this is quite common item for aquaponics uh, your waste I mean, ikan saya baru lima minggu dilepaskan dalam aquaponics system and still ada yang mati perut hijau saya dah letak EM setiap kali ada kes kematian ada cara lain tak uh, ok your fish dying after you already five weeks there's something not right five weeks and your fish is still dying uh, to me I never experienced fish die in that situation uh, too much too many uh, if you just bought fingerlings and you put in satu dua one or two die is okay it's normal uh, the most is 10% and uh, one of the problem is aeration it also could be uh, nitrite in the system if you have too many fish the ammonia in the system if it's not checked will cause uh, poisoning to the fish and if uh, ammonia is been converted to nitrite it also can harm the fish it only need to be it only required to be converted to nitrate then only will less toxic and fish will survive so your system i'm not sure how long is your system let's say as assume your system is five weeks old that's actually a, a very long time already the, for the system to mature is roughly around eight weeks eight weeks the system will mature provided your water flow is good uh, you don't specify what kind of system you are uh, you are practicing whether you're using siphon you're using the, the nft or you're using dwc so then we can see what is the possible problem uh, on your system because uh, yeah you just mentioned about that but to me uh, the first state step is put aeration if you if you suspect there is problem with the fish first put aeration then second one is stop feeding the fish stop feeding the fish for two days three days stop feeding the fish and fish can also die because of overfeeding and uh, stop feeding the fish and put a lot of aeration these are the two steps that i will recommend for anybody unless you want to do a ammonia check uh, the level of ammonia as per recommended whether it's more than certain part per million like nitrite not more than 0.5 or from some place some people quote at 0.25 some people quote at 0.5 uh, for nitrite but to me I never bother to check ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, I never even check. But from experience, we have a, to, you will need to have a good water circulation. And if your system is new, don't put too many fish, especially bigger fish. You can put fingerlings, small fingerlings, you can put small fingerlings. And I put as many as 100 fingerlings at one time on a 400 liter tank or 350 liter tank water content probably 300 liter only so i put 100 fingerlings no problem water circulation must be good water aeration must be good so this is the key for aquaponics but for a system that is been operated for roughly around six weeks that means you have to basically look at it properly what is the problem uh, if you can tell me what is your system that you are practicing then or is there any problem with your system, uh, uh, water flow? That's all. Okay, uh, another question. White waste. Okay. Thank you for your explanation. All right. Thank you very much. Moluska, Manus. Uh, what happened to your strawberry plant? Does they flourish in aquaponics? Okay. Strawberry, it does flourish. The only problem when i grow it uh, in the lowland at certain times the the heat is too much uh, and it start to kill the plant during the month of uh, july to august at one point two years ago there was a lot of heat and start to kill the plant so i have a small place actually small space i i 
I love to practice aquapon uh, the strawberry again because it can easily be multiplied and easily grown. Uh, we need to have a proper shading, uh, a proper control setup for strawberry. You can, you can. I don't recommend you to mix strawberry with other plants. They tend to creep along, make it difficult to control. And and strawberry also subject to a lot of root rot problem. So these are the things that I still need to resolve on strawberry. As I mentioned, strawberry is best to have it on its own. The grow bed, or the gutter grow bed is on its own. So I need to redo the strawberry uh, gutter grow bed and plant strawberry. Is is a very good uh, is a very challenging plants to grow, and it, I managed to get it to fruit from you see the videos that I show. That's actually a strawberry plant that that is been grown from um, uh, the the uh, plants that I uh, take from small uh, on the lowland. So it, it did fruit. So but it need a lot of a special arrangement and plus strawberry is is one of the plants as I mentioned earlier uh, yeah, last week the plants that require a lot of pesticide a lot of fungicide because this is the plant that that uh, been attacked with a lot of uh, fungus uh, the white uh, bena putih there's a lot of things problem with strawberry so strawberry farming require a lot of chemicals in order to keep the plant uh, uh, in a good condition. So that's the problem where a strawberry is a bit of a challenge to grow it on the lowland. The rain especially, uh, strawberry require a lot of water but not from the above, it require it from the bottom. Because if a lot of water coming from above like rain, it will have problem with uh, uh, rotting of the strawberry plant. The crown will start to have problem. But it need a lot of water, but it need to come from bottom. So aquaponics is actually ideal for strawberry. A lot of water coming from the bottom. But the only thing is I have to shade it from rain uh, with some kind of uh, transparent uh, setting uh, roof. So that's where strawberry is a bit require a special treatment. Uh, okay. Your five feet tank, how many fish that you recommend to start? Okay, five feet tank is a lot. Uh, fish, water. The water is that's basically. Uh, I'm not sure how many the liter. I never really counted the amount of water in the fish, uh, in the tank. But four fingerlings, you can just throw 100 fingerlings in there. No problem, no issue. Uh, assuming it's a tilapia fingerlings or lampam fingerling, 100 fingerlings, no problem. Even when it grow to a uh, adult tilapia we will not have any problem. So I will recommend you start with fingerlings, then the fish will grow up slowly and the system will, uh, it will adapt to the system and the system will grow with the fish. Don't straight away put uh, an, uh, uh, mature fish. Mature fish will, you will need to reduce the number of mature fish because uh, mature fish will produce more ammonia, will require more feeding and straight away you, you jump start a system with mature fish it's not really that good so if you do mature fish in this kind of setup I will always recommend the most you put 20 fish that's the most then as the time goes you add more fish another 10 another 10 over a period of six weeks so initially start off as best as possible, keep it to a minimum, what we call it starter fish. So even 20 is also a, a higher end of the margin. Start with 10 fish for this kind of size. 10 fish start. So after, an, after one week, put in another 10. After another one week, put in another 10. So over the period of six weeks, you will have 60 fish. So that's, that's how, how you should start off an, a new aquaponic system. Don't ever start off with the maximum number of fish or only talking about the minimum number of fish and maintain the minimum. This is no good. You have to let the system grow. 
So after a week, add. After two weeks, add. So the number of fish. You have to assess. If your fish start to die, don't add. You just uh, replenish a few only. Don't add much fish. Because there will be something, there's a problem in the system. Let the system stabilize, the fish uh, don't die, then you start to add again. So th there is no hard and fast rule, but you have to make sure the system is if, if taken care and let it mature and uh, the fish added into the system also with stages to make sure the system will take care of itself. It takes time for the bacteria to grow, to multiply in the system. So when you start out an aquaponic system, uh, initially there will be traces of the uh, bacteria in the system. So you don't expect to put a lot of fish, so just put a few. So then as the fish produce ammonia, nitri uh, ammonia, this ammonia will be utilized by the few bac uh, bacteria in the system and they will start to grow quickly. However, the number of the ammonia produced by the fish is more uh, than the bacteria can handle if it's uh, too short of a time. So let it grow. Uh, so this is only my recommendation for, for a, a startup. Take it time, take the time. Over a period of six weeks, then you can stock the fish. Eight weeks is normal for an aquaponic system to mature, but it's only become a basic maturity. It's not really capable to do a full-scale uh, planting with uh, fruiting plants. It need longer time than that for it to able to to you able to plant a more plant that require higher nutrient. Okay, about the fish. What uh, I am a tower. I am a oh, tower. Tower hydroponic. My plant pots glued to. 110 PVC pipe are vulnerable to mild impact and it leaks. Any tips on plumbing to strengthen the tower pots? Okay. Uh, tower pots. I'm not going to claim that I'm expert at everything. Uh, I never practice uh, tower pots. Uh, and this, normally, in kind of any installation, I have to experience it. And we have to figure out how best to to strengthen it. Things like your UPVC pipes, they sell something like a, a collar that you can put a, around the uh, a pipe. Uh, probably explore that way. But uh, to be honest with you, I never practice uh, a tower system. Uh, the recommendation that I made just now is solely based on the mechanical part of an installation, the, the piping, the, the mechanical part installation. However, to make sure it will really work, I have for me, I have to practice. I have to experiment. It can, it will take a lot of experiment before trial and error before we can resolve a problem. But if you are lucky, you put something, it works, then you are lucky. But as I mentioned, I'm not going to pretend that I'm expert at everything. I, if I do not experience it, I can only assess it by information that is available to me or experience as a, the mechanical aspect of this. Uh, I will analyze it through mechanical aspect because um, uh, professionally, I'm an engineer, so I should know all the uh, aspect of all this <laughs> uh, installation. But still you need to experiment because a special installation will require a special um, uh, uh, things to rectify. Okay, uh, what is your experience with freshwater lobster? Okay, the uh, Encik Afendi Halili in Malacca, he start up with this uh, aquaponic lobster. He came over to my place and bought my system. He did learn a bit on aquaponics. I share my knowledge on aquaponics. He started up uh, the lobster. He did give me a few sample of lobster uh, uh, free because we are uh, in a we are communicating uh, without problem. Unfortunately, I think he got a stroke. He was attacked by got a stroke attack. So I'm quite uh, quite a, a sad thing happened. But uh, my experience with uh, lobster is quite minimal. 
I try to grow lobster. Uh, lobster require clean water. Your water circulation require to be good. Don't ever overfeed lobster also. And the feeding of lobster is very critical. Don't overfeed lobster. And to say more about lobster, I'm not really qualified because my knowledge on lobster, I did not practice it that long. I have, I have a limited space. Uh, that's the reason why I do not want to experiment with lobster. If I have a bigger space that I can have a lot of uh, aquaponic setup tanks, uh, I would experiment on those things. But unfortunately, I have a very limited space and I have to uh, experiment only on the things that are available to me. If I want to start to do a lot of other things, then it would not be a good thing. Because as they say, you can be jack of all trade and master of none. Basically, you're just following people and do what they do. So to me, I practice my aquaponics only on this system to have a small scale aquaponic system. I try to make the small scale aquaponic system as best as possible so that everybody can practice aquaponics. Uh, in lobster, I'm not that familiar. I'm sorry about that. My aquaponic system, five weeks old, first time pH recorded is 7.6. That's good. What is maximum allowable pH reading for aquaponic system? Thank you. Okay. Maximum uh, reading of an aquaponic system depends on the water that you are having in the system. Because aquaponics pH will never ever go higher from the water that you are supplying it. It will Let's say you use a tap water of pH of 8 because tap water pH is quite high. Let's say pH tap water about 8 or 8.5 tap water pH. You put it in. Once the nitrification process occur, it will drop, the pH will drop because the nitrification process is giving acidic into the system, make the water acidic. So the bacteria will make the water acidic because it's something like uh, fermentation, penapayan. It's very similar but it doesn't reach that level too low. So initially water can go as high as 8, 8.5, then it will start to drop. An aquaponic system definitely will drop in its uh, pH value, will never rise. If it rise, there's something not right. Because if the pH value will rise, that means your bacteria is dying. There's not enough bacteria to cause the acidity to go higher or reduce the pH. Or you will have a lot of corals inside, overwhelm the number of bacteria in your system. So for a normal aquaponic system, the pH will go lower and lower and lower. We need to buffer it up to around 7.5, 7.6. That's a good value or 7, that's a good value and maintain that value, you will not have any problem. Maximum, if you go more than 8, the problem is, as I mentioned last week, the plants. The plant will start to have yellowing leaf because what will happen, uh, high pH plant will shut down their ability to absorb nutrient. The certain traces element that the plant require, it will be uh, stop from absorbing by the plant. So the plant will experience uh, de uh, nutrient deficiencies, will experience yellowing of leaf. So these are the things that can happen if your pH value go higher than 8. So 7.6, 7.7, those are the limit that I really recommend. But if you look at my videos, there is a very simple way to lim control the pH value to around this value without any problem. So to me, I don't bother much about pH because my pH I know is around 7.5, 7.6. It's just nice, not that alkaline, not that acidic. It will just maintain around that. Okay. How about, how about the plants for start? We need to put small plants or big plants straight away. <laughs> Plant just like fish. Don't ever start with big plants straight away. Start with small plants. Start with simple plants. Plants that can recover when your system has matured. 
you in when you start aquaponics your nutrient is uh, not much because the bacteria is not there not 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 has even colonized the system fully haven't matured so the the ammonia is not been converted into nitrate that that might that much so obviously you have to start with small plants simple cuttings uh, things like kasum selum simple plants that can grow and can recover if the system get better don't ever start with tomato chili no way uh, this kind of plant require high nutrient content in the system after about six to eight months then only you can start in fact i would recommend uh, more than eight months you can recommend start with uh, plants which require high nutrient content Plants that do not require high nutrient content are the leafy vegetables. Leafy vegetables do not require that high nutrient. Uh, start off with those kind of uh, vegetables. The fruiting plants started during after a, a long time, roughly about six to eight months after you have started aquaponics. Then only you can start those kind of uh, plants. Otherwise, you will not do well. So that's how I practice. Uh, also on, on nutrient, sometimes it's best also to use seaweed extract. Let me get uh, the seaweed extract. I have a seaweed extract. I don't use it that much. initial start of your aquaponic system sometimes you need booster because let's face it uh, sometimes the bacteria doesn't really grow that well uh, so you can add seaweed extract this seaweed extract you can add you can get it at nursery shop this one uh, I bought it at uh, Roma Agrotech one of my blog I have it uh, the address and the location Roma Agrotech uh, they sell this uh, seaweed extract and just add a bit don't overdo it this this one because uh, just to booster as a booster for the startup uh, seaweed extract and it will it will uh, provide an uh, initial boost to your system uh, but as usual like anything in aquaponics don't overdo it don't overstock the fish don't overdo with fertilizer don't overdo with seaweed extract don't, don't overdo with anything so keep it uh, moderate and then it will be okay. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> Kaos, hi Afnan, good to see you on live video. My pH drop quite frequently to 6. I suppose my water hardness is low. Do you have any advice for me? I use potassium and calcium to boost. Uh, okay, seaweed extract. Okay. Uh, right, uh, Kaos. Uh, I don't recommend to use those uh, potassium, uh, calcium. It will only cause your system to hunting. What I recommend is actually limestone, the cheapest of the of all. Uh, let me just fish out the limestone from my system. Okay things I do for aquaponics. <laughs> right, these are, these are simple limestones. This is all I use to keep my aquaponics system in check for the uh, pH. So what I do, I keep the, I put limestone in the pots and just put it inside the fish tank. To make it better, you can put an aeration outlet underneath the pots to aerate the, the limestone. So that will make it better. So what happens is the limestone will react with the acid. It will bring up the pH. Once the pH become neutral, it will stop the reaction. And it will keep the balance in check. Without you have to add uh, calcium, without you have to add uh, carbonates, no problem. In terms of potassium, it's okay because you want to provide um, uh, traces element to the plants, no problem. Yes, eggshell also can do. 
but Excel because it's quite uh, small, uh, it's quite uh, thin, it will tend to um, dissolve faster in the system. So I never use Excel, but I do not have uh, so much uh, chicken eggs probably. <laughs> so uh, I use limestone. Limestone is very cheap. Uh, I bought about uh, 20 ringgit one bag, and I can say it can it can last me uh, uh, two decades. Okay, that's about limestone. Just put it. Just throw your limestone in the fish tank. It will keep your aquaponic system in check. Okay, uh, let me check. Thank you. Does uh, aquaponic need to add NPK fertilizer and CO2 similar to aquarium plants? Okay, CO2 no requirement. Aquarium plant requires CO2 because it is in water. Uh, especially those people that are uh, practicing aquascape, this kind of things. They have a very uh, expensive uh, setup with CO2 to provide uh, uh, the carbon dioxide to the plants for photosynthesis. So for aquaponic plants, CO2 not required at all because it is just like any other plants exposed to the atmosphere. CO2 is abundance in the atmosphere that the plant make use during the sunlight. At night, plant will breathe oxygen as normal. Uh, so that's it. Plant only need CO2 for photosynthesis. At night, no photosynthesis occur. Plant will just consume oxygen again. All right, uh, NPK fertilizer. Uh, basically, on fertilizer, a very rare I use fertilizer. I will look at my plant condition and what type of plants. If you require to use fertilizer, uh, select the N with uh, the lowest value because uh, aquaponic system provide a lot of N, a lot of uh, nitrogen, nitrates in the system. So the NPK, the N value, keep it to the minimum and the P and the K, uh, you can have higher. That's what I recommend uh, for if you want to use fertilizer. However, the fertilizer I recommend is the natural based fertilizer, the based on the chicken, chicken, chicken waste or uh, bats or goats, those are the best fertilizer. But as usual, don't overdo it. Fertilizer I will only put in the system uh, if it is really necessary. So far, I've not been putting any fertilizer for the last two years, three years. No, I did not put any fertilizer uh, in my system. Uh, probably because of the selection of plants that I select. Uh, sufficient for them to make use of the uh, high content of nitrates in the system. However, if you are practicing other plants which uh, demand other fertilizer part, the P and the K, then you have to add fertilizer but lower down on the N content. Mm. Please share shop selling tilapia family around Klang Valley for small amount around 30 to 50 fish. Thanks. Uh, you can go to for tilapia fingerlings. You can go to Sungai Buloh, Selangor Green Lane. I think lot 61. Lot 61, Selangor Green Lane. They, they occasionally have tilapia. Or you can go to ARC. Inside my blog, I have ARC. Uh, probably their phone number is there. They are located in Sungai Buloh. So ARC is also uh, selling. Also, there are a few other shops in Sungai Buloh, uh, like Aquarium Kejora in, in Sungai Buloh Main Road, uh, Sungai Buloh Kuala Selangor Road. They may have also. But as usual, this tilapia fingerlings, they do not keep it for long because most of the time, they use this tilapia fingerling is as a fish feed for bigger fish. And tilapia fingerlings is only sell for uh, the most 20 cent, 15 to 20 cent each. So they, 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 don't, tend, they don't tend to keep tilapia fingerling for long because this shop need to feed the fish. If the fish of uh, low value like the tilapia fingerling, they don't keep for long because it's going to be a, a loss to them to keep. So some shop will keep tilapia fingerling, some don't because you have to shop around. But I know the lot 60 or 61, Selangor Green Lane, near Kota Damansara, have it. 
uh, the last I visit before the MCO is there. Uh, uh, aquarium Kejora. The last visit I went, they don't have it. Uh, ARC, it's quite some time I did not go there, but you can call. Have a look. Uh, please check my blog and just search for ARC, uh, search for the, the, the keywords. Based on your experience between tilapia and patin fish, what are the pro and cons? Tilapia and patin, hmm, these are two different fish. Tilapia is the uh, patin is an air breeder. Patin uh, tilapia, patin is an air breeder. Tilapia is hybrid. It's air breeder plus it have gills, so it can somehow uh, survive in water like the patin can survive but it also can do water which other fish that have gills can survive so uh, tilapia is a bit unique this fish uh, pros and con patin is easier to to grow basically than compared to uh, tilapia because it's an air breeder any air breeder fish is easy to grow so no problem the air breeder is very easy to grow uh, to to rare, uh, easier than uh, gills. But tilapia is because uh, it's a hybrid fish, so it's also easy. Uh, in terms of advantage or disadvantage, patin and tilapia is much better tilapia in the sense of uh, when it comes to giving, uh, when it comes to giving uh, nutrient to the plants. Tilapia is much better compared to patin. Because patin is a catfish family. When it comes to a catfish family, they grow very fast. The, the feed that you feed the fish will be consumed a lot by the fish metabolism to create flesh for the fish as compared to tilapia. So when it comes to the fish water uh, for patin, it will be less nutritious. Nut nutrient will be less as compared to tilapia. If you talking about uh, a specific variety, only one variety of fish in one tank. So uh, any catfish uh, family, the the fish waste, the the water in the fish tank, the nutrient value is very low as compared to tilapia. The worst one that I do not recommend is keli. Keli I do, highly do not recommend in aquaponics. Yes, you can have keli in aquaponics, no problem. You do not need to take care about anything. It will grow. The thing about keli, the waste is uh, waste of keli is so useless, it, it hardly have much nutrient compared to other fish. But keli is very easy to grow. You just throw it there, it will grow. But keli I do not recommend because you will not learn anything about water control. In aquaponics, the part of the fun is to learn about water control. You do not want to have it too challenging. The fish like uh, kelah, which require a very high degree of water control. But you want some kind of uh, fish which is halfway, that will give you the knowledge to learn and to develop your skill into a more challenging fish. Keli will never teach you anything. It only teach you how to feed the keli. Uh, and because keli will survive even without oxygen, without anything, because it's an air breeder. Same thing with patin. Patin will also survive in that way, in that environment. And that's why I, I not really recommend uh, fish like keli. Patin is, is a trade-off. I usually mix patin with tilapia. Tilapia is also a good fish to start as a starter. It's not that challenging. It's not that something that you do not need to, you, you can neglect it totally. So it's something that can give you practice. That's why we recommend tilapia. And the tilapia flesh is also uh, can be used as, as your food. So it's good. Another fish that I highly recommend is lampam. If you want to start with a challenging fish, before you go think like kelah, which is highly challenging, or uh, kerai uh, fish, try lampam. Lampam is the best fish in terms of giving nutrient to aquaponics. 
because lampang is actually lit it very less and it metabolism of uh, lampang it grow slow when it grow slow what it eat it will give out to the system so the the fish waste coming from lampam like the the ammonia produced by the lampam is more than tilapia for the same number of fish so lampam is much better but lampam eat less so you will save a lot of fish feed if you grow lampam but you get a lot of nutrient for the plants as compared to tilapia as compared to patin so only problem with lampam because a lot of bones not many people like lampam so is a, a is a trade off lampam yeah your your spelling is correct lampam l a m p a m lampam is a lampam in english is a, i forgot about the name but in my blog i i put it lampam you have a river a barb b a r b barb river barb lampam with river barb b a r b river barb okay all right limestone and what about eggshell okay no problem i answer that for aeration limestone ada specific jumlah batu kena guna tak okay uh, how much limestone to use uh, that is quite a difficult formula to calculate however for my tank at the back i just use three pots three pots a uh, medium size pots about uh, six inches pots i put limestone in there i just put it there i do not want to scatter the limestone around because if i scatter it around it's difficult for me to collect the limestone if i want to catch the fish so i just put them in pots uh something like a net pots which is big one for the for the orchid yeah your spelling of lampam is correct l a m p a m lampam is a uh, uh, b a r b bab uh river bab uh use a net pot big huge net pot for the one they planting orchids put a lot of uh, uh limestone in it a uh, three pots is good enough it will constantly react with your water the thing is you leave it there even in small quantity it will do a, a constant reaction without without fail so is there Okay, uh, tank size saya 450 liter. Okay, tank size 450 liter. That's okay. That's good. You can have a uh, 100 mature fish if you really put it full. But usually the tank size is 450 liter, but the water content is not really that much. Is you are talking about a safe value of around 350 to 375. So that is amount number of fish. If if you let's say you have 300 liter of water. Just divide it by four, then you have a number of fish that you required to put in for mature fish. Thank for the explanation. Tala Pengeling, I will check those shop how to spell lampam. Okay, I don't spell lampam. Okay, Tali. Okay, that's about uh, 95 minutes already for uh, uh, my life, uh, and uh, the sun is coming up through my back lane. Apologize for this. portrait uh, live streaming as i mentioned on earlier part of my video just now i already have it on landscape but the apple decide to play me out so <laughs> next i will probably use uh, samsung for my live streaming or get something better for my live streaming okay so thanks a lot thank you for uh, coming over for my live feed Uh, I'm not sure whether I want to save this video because I hate portrait mode of uh, of videos. Uh,